Stan Jabalisco here with a little demonstration of how a digital multimeter, this particular unit is a Radio Shack TRMS digital multimeter, can test diodes to see whether or not they're good. A diode, as you may know, always conducts conventional current in the direction that the arrow points, that is from anode to cathode or from p-type to n-type material. Electrons can flow through a rectifier diode in the opposite direction, that is against the arrow, from the cathode to the anode or from the n-type material to the p-type. So here we have three rectifier diodes. The cathodes, that is the n-type material, is all on, are all on the left-hand sides of these diodes so that if you had the arrows, if you had these were schematic symbols, you would find that the arrows all point to the left. So we should expect that electrons would flow in this arrangement from left to right, whereas conventional current would go from right to left. Ele uh, conventional current, remember, goes from plus to minus. That's more commonly used by physicists, not by um, engineers, who generally will talk about electron flow. Let's just short out the leads of this. Now I've got it set here to the diode uh, symbol. Now there's little uh, waves here and then there's a little diode symbol. You need to hit the select button on this thing so that it shows a little diode symbol up there and then it's going to tell you the voltage drop that you are seeing. Uh, across this device. Well, in an open circuit, the voltage drop is basically undefined. You, you could call it infinity, but that's not really a very good way to, to describe it. It's undefined for the purpose of testing a diode. What you want to do, if you short out the leads here, what you're getting, basically, is a, a zero voltage drop. I mean, ideally you should get zero here all the time, but the purpose of this thing is to test a diode. And you should get no uh, voltage or no current flowing through this device with this particular meter, with the red probe on the cathode and the black probe on the anode. So you know that right now this meter is trying to force electrons through this diode from right to left, but it's not having any luck. Electrons therefore come out of the black or negative probe here and go into the red or positive probe. So in fact the polarity of the voltage at these probes is the same as the color codes of the probes would indicate. Negative, positive. So let's reverse these now and see what we get. 0.565. Now that is the voltage drop with this particular meter's battery and internal apparatus this silicon voltage produces 0.565 volts, or it has a, five point, a 0.565 voltage drop, which is just about right in the ballpark for a silicon rectifier. Let's test this one. 0.560. Again, that's in the ballpark, but now we have to test it in the other direction as well. We don't want to see anything, and we don't. Let's try this one. Now we shouldn't see anything here because we're trying to force electrons through this diode from anode to cathode, and that should not occur. Unless, of course, you exceed the 
um, the peak inverse voltage or the avalanche voltage. If you exceed the avalanche voltage of a diode like this, all bets are off. And we see that it, it, that it works here. Electrons can flow from left to right, that is, from cathode to anode. It can get confusing when you talk about conventional current versus electron current. But for a diode, remember, the electrons should always flow against the arrow, but not in the direction of the arrow under normal operation. Now, there are other types of diodes, Zener diodes and things like that, that, that are in fact meant to conduct in the reverse direction. But we call this forward bias. When we make a cathode of a diode negative with respect to the anode. Now, if the interior if the internal voltage of this meter were less than 0.56 about 0.568 volts for this diode, 0.559 for this one, 0.566 for that one. If the voltage were less than that, we wouldn't see conduction because we would not be meeting the forward breakover threshold of the diode. And this is the forward breakover voltage, 0.565, and uh, the others that we measured. I wonder, just out of curiosity, if we put these in series, what we're going to get. Well, that's about twice 0.56, isn't it? Or 0.55, something on the order thereof. And here about three times that. That should not surprise us. But I have discovered that when diodes conduct current, their forward voltage drops vary a little bit depending on how much the current is. Uh, on the other hand, if you have zero current, you have no load at all across one of these, it exhibits a voltage drop, but it's only about three-tenths of a volt. So this uh, meter is trying to drive current through that diode, and it's a good way to test a rectifier diode. You should get something like that in the forward direction, and you should get essentially nothing in the reverse direction. This meter, the Radio Shack TRMS Digital Multimeter, is a new toy that I just bought today. And pretty soon it's going to be yesterday because I'm making this video almost at midnight. But be that as it may. It says volts there. I guess that indicates the vo voltage drop. I'm just learning how to use this without the instruction manual. My basic motto is P-E-B-I-S, push every button in sight, or T-E-S-I-S, -S, thesis, throw every switch in sight. As long as the thing isn't going to blow up or catch on fire and burn my house down or something, I mean, it's not going to do that with a 3-volt battery in there. The worst thing that could happen is that I would make a mistake and try to measure, say, voltage from an electrical outlet with the meter set to measure microamperes. If I did that, presumably the little fuse in there would blow and protect the meter from destruction. Presumably. So that's a little review of how to test diodes with a multimeter like this. And some multimeters don't have this specific mode. Then you have to find out which one of the probes is negative and which one is positive. Sometimes they agree with the color codes like they do with this meter, but sometimes they don't. And I used to have old analog meters where they didn't. They were re reversed. So you need to know that. But you can always test a diode. You can do it with an ohmmeter. We got uh, kilo ohms, meg ohms there. Let's just try meg ohms and, or kilo ohms here and see what we get. We get 49.1615 kilo ohms, but that's kind of a meaningless figure because it's dependent upon the battery and the internal resistances of the meter. But we should always get infinity going that way.
So you can use an ohmmeter to measure to test a diode as well. Uh, generally speaking, I think you would want to set it for mega ohms. Let's see what happens if we set it for mega ohms. Well, you should get a finite reading in one direction and uh, undefined or infinite in the other if you want to use an ohmmeter setting to test a diode. You can test uh, bipolar and field effect transistors the same way, using the same technique. All you need to do is remember that electrons should always flow from n-type to p-type across a junction, a p-n junction, and they should never flow from p-type to n-type. So once you know that, you can test all kinds of uh, field effect and bipolar transistors, which I have done. But I won't try to do that here now because the, the, the bipolar and field effect transistors that I do have are so tiny. <laughs> it's sad. It's sad. I My big fat fingers. Look at that. The meaty old hands. They can't handle that little stuff. That's why I have this breadboard built with these big nails uh, driven into a piece of wood. Good old fashioned. Uh, you could really use a meat cutting board or a real breadboard. To, to make this, I just picked this thing up at a lumber yard. I didn't want to get fancy. But that's how to test a diode, and in the next video, I'll play around with this meter some more. It's a cool thing. Radio Shack TRMS sent me back about 49 bucks. From the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America, Stan Jibalisco, signing off until next time. So long.